Hey you, what are you looking at? Oh, I'm just kidding. It's me, Diogen Z. Welcome to Pokemon Conquest, the final training episode. And then we take on Dragnor. Oh, Nobunaga will pay. Wanting to destroy Ronse? Let's not forget what we're fighting for, people. He wants to destroy Ronse with the legendary Pokemon that created Ronse. It's like a smack in the face to the programmer of this world. It's like the gamers giving back this game and saying, Hey programmers, can you make this massive glitch that will cause your entire beautiful creation to fail? And this is the only copy you have. No backups allowed. Why would I do that? That's what Nobunaga is posing to the entire Ronsei region right now. And we will stop him. We will! I hope. You know, we won't be able to unless we do this discipline training. So I think after this last boring battle, I said I would do it last time, and I'm sticking to my word because it does take a lot of months. I'm just going to show you the evolutions. That's what we're going for here. You just want to see which Pokemon will finally evolve, not see all these boring Badoof battles that will get by and aren't even necessary once I do the strategy of eating Ponagiri from the Ponagiri shop or just going to the mines. The mines are much more effective and here's why. You can only take Pokemon to the Ponagiri shop if their energy levels are lower. And the way you can tell that is by the little arrows you'll see on the icons next to their name when you're in the info section. You can see an arrow pointing up, an arrow being in the neutral midground, or an arrow plummeting downwards. That is when they are low energy, mid energy. And if they're high energy, that pointing up arrow, they can't go to the Ponagiri shop. So you won't be able to progress every time with every member of your team if you keep going because Panagiri raises energy. If you just keep going to the mines, you every time will have a new chance to get extra cash, which is great because after going through all these month cycles of simple training, making sure all of your other areas throughout Ronsei are delegated to train, they'll auto evolve like this. If you want to check if a particular region that you're training a Pokemon in is ready to evolve, I evolved that Pokemon with a Leaf Stone. And, ho ho ho! Now we have a double M Boar. This was pure experience. Many times in the mines will warrant this guy. Yukimura's now finally fully evolved. And probably best linked with that M Boar, if I had to guess. And Tepig? Eh, we're going back in time throughout Tepig's evolution. From Embor to Tepig, back to Pig Knight. It morphs all over the place. But you need those extra monies you get from the mine in case that traveling saleswoman comes back. So you can get the Leaf Stone, so you can evolve your broccoli monkeys and anything else that you've gathered along the way that will evolve with the Leaf Stone. Drillbur and Excadrill. Excellent. It's got a great dig power. So it doesn't usually show up on the battlefield, but it strikes massively with those giant claws. Although I don't think it will be much of a help in the upcoming battle with Dragnor. We'll see. Oh, and this psychic dude. I remember him from Elusio. That's great. Now we've got a Gallade and a Gardevoir. We've got both sides of the evolution train chain, train chain, speak better, of Ralts. So that's good. And, okay, another Venipede going into a Whirlipede. But the question is, have we trained enough? Will we see the Scarlipede? I just love that bug. It's a steamroller of a centipede. Oh, but that's perfect. I love to see starter Pokemon get to their fullest evolutions. Now, Empoleon, the steel water penguin, is on our side. Always was on our side, but that form was hiding. 
hiding in the lack of experience and best linkage that it had to its warrior. Wow, this is just an evolution montage. That's the best part of this game. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's not the best part. It's one of the best parts. Evolution is always exciting in games. And for it to all happen like this consecutively is even better. All our hard work and training. Flaffy's like, I lifted weights while I was delegated and I turned into Ampharos. Weird. I don't know if Flaffy's usually working out like that and singing in the gym. And then that guy's like, I taught him how to sing, that's why he sings like that. Do you feel the power? I feel the power of the electricity. That guy is shocked out of his mind by his electric Pokemon there. Ampharos probably has full control of him by now. Now he's just a puppet singing like this. And we've got another Gardevoir. That's great. More psychic power to our side. It is wonderful. Don't look so surprised. <gasps> yes! This is the evolution I've been waiting for! Oh, look at how tankish that thing is. It's like, I'm gonna run you over. With this, I will never be stopped. It's a birthday present. Man, that's a great birthday present. Oh, double scallopede in a row. That's what I like it to see. It's like, oh, can we play that back one more time? Yes, we can. Because we had two. It's even got feelers on its neck, coursing up, ready to smack down into any foe with poison points. Nasty Pokemon. It'll be great for taking any grass region we come encountered with, because it's a bug and poison type. A double super effectiveness. And another Ampharos. Ampharos in this game looks ready to rock. It looks poised to attack. I've seen it in past RPGs, and it looks like a dawdling stuffed toy sometimes. It's cute, and it does have good special attack, but in this game it looks like it's ready to rain thunderbolt hell from the sky. And this guy, Machoke, ready to cross chop to your choke, to your chest, and choke you out. Well, well, well. So now we have to, I believe, if we want to get him a champ, fight a warlord. And, up! Oh, look at this. Even a minor evolution of a baby Pokemon into a second Jigglypuff. Now Oichi is not the only one in town with Jiggles. Oh no, the audience. They all fell asleep. Time to pull out the marker. Nope, it's not. It's time to evolve a Whooper into Quagtha. Quagtha. Sitting on the pond. I can see that thing sleeping all day on its back in any pool. It's like, what? I'm just quagging out. I'm not Quagmire, I'm Quagsire. Oh, it's a double Quagsire evolution. The Whoopers decided this together. They're like, whoop, whoop, ah, whoop, 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 whoop. And the warriors were not knowing what that meant. They thought, oh no, our whoopers, they must be getting a whooping cough. But instead, they were planning this conspiracy to evolve all at the same time. It's almost like they have an evolution season, and this episode is it. The full moon of evolution, the full moonstone of evolution is out. So now every Pokemon evolves, even if they do not get induced evolutions through a moonstone. I know, it doesn't make sense. But what does is all the mining that I did. Tough times in the mines. Not really. All this delegation was auto done. And I must say, this saves Conquest. This is a brilliant feature that we get to see all these crazy evolutions. Skeptile, or Sceptile, however you want to pronounce it, looks badass. Ready to slash people up with that arm blade of a leaf. That's crazy. Looks amazing, but this is an excellent thing that Conquest enabled. If there was no delegations, this game would be so much more tedious in order to get all these Pokemon to single-handedly train every single warrior, even if they were a minor one, like the Magikarp warriors. And that bear tick will probably be by our side in the next episode. 
but I must say, brilliant thing with the delegations, led to many evolutions, and now, with the best Link Bear Tick, we will see in the next episode how we stack up against Dragnor.